Another top five team that could be laying close to 10 points. Haslam makes Tennessee a nine-point home favorite in Knoxville against Kentucky. Keep in mind, Tennessee already clinched the SEC regular season title outright. Total projected of around 161. Kind of similar to the tune that we've hit on already. My numbers make this closer to Tennessee, minus 5.5, minus 6. Going back to that Tennessee-South Carolina matchup, just something to note here for the SEC overall full body of work when we get closer to the NCAA tournament. South Carolina failing to cover against the Vols at home, losing outright, obviously, like I touched on. South Carolina ranks number six in Ken Palm's luck metric ranking, and that has a lot to do with a third of their wins coming by two possessions or fewer. So de facto coin flip games, depending on how you look at games decided by six points or less. Another sh- poor shooting performance, though, for Dalton Connect. He struggled struggled against Alabama last weekend, 9 of 23 against South Carolina. Very physical Gamecocks defense. Going back to the first meeting between Tennessee and Kentucky at Rupp, Tennessee winning that one outright. I think the two teams combined for close to 200 points. Kentucky obviously out for revenge. They've been playing better defensively since that home loss against Tennessee and keep in mind no DJ Wagner in that game and he is red hot from three over the last few games for Kentucky overall nine of 14 from behind the arc what are the keys for you in this one Derek and any lean or potential bet for either side you know from a motivational spot you kind of hit on it Um, Kentucky's out for revenge after you know they got thumped in February by 21 to Tennessee um, and also there are four teams deadlocked at 12 and five in the SEC, uh, Kentucky, Auburn, Alabama, and South Carolina. If Kentucky loses this one, they have to play four games instead of three. But if they win, they can bump up all the way to the number two seed in the SEC tournament next week. I think I have to look at the numbers, but I think they can get up to a, the number two seed in the SEC tournament next week. Um, because of um, because of tiebreakers. So that's one thing to note with Kentucky is that they could have a motivational spot here. But the other thing, and you hit on it, is that DJ Wagner didn't play in their last matchup. Um, he's one of the best guards on Kentucky at getting downhill and attacking the rim, right? You know, which Kentucky kind of struggled with their last time around. They only shot like 8 of 15 uh, on their shots at the rim. It was just a really... Uh, struggling issue for them. And with him back in the lineup and the way he's shooting the ball right now, I do expect a better performance from Kentucky this time around. And, um, you know, you kind of have to hope that they can contain Connect one more time, right? Because I thought they did a really good job on him last time around. They threw a couple different guys at him with Edwards and Thierro that have really good length, and it really bothered Connect a little bit. So if you can throw those tall guys at him and just limit him, I think think they'll be fine but I you know I am kind of skeptical of them defensively uh they kind of slip on the banana peel sometimes in these big matchups um you know defensively so I am gonna if it's around eight or so I am gonna back Kentucky in this one but have to see what the opener is so this is one of those where I would probably project the market to jump on Kentucky just because of the spot. Great points by you when it comes to SEC tournament seeding. You go back to that first meeting too. Dalton Connect, only 16 points. And keep in mind, his player prop is, when it comes to total points scored, it's usually lined at around 21, 22 and a half. Ziegler, though, was phenomenal, especially from behind the arc and then some three of six from deep tied for the team lead in scoring with Josiah Jordan-James, who has been a big revelation for Tennessee when it comes to three-point shooting, at least in clutch moments like we saw last weekend against Alabama. I mean, he missed some big shots last year in the NCAA tournament. I know his three-point percentage, the differential is only around two percentage points, but it just seems like for the eye test, he's hitting many more clutch shots than he did in crunch time last season. But... When it comes to spacing out one or the other between Kentucky and Tennessee, with Mitchell back in the lineup, or with Big Z for that matter, who came from overseas in the offseason, 
Kentucky can do a better job of that than they did in the previous matchup you would expect, especially with Big Z playing more minutes. And Tennessee doesn't necessarily want to allow you to take a lot of threes, but they are allowing the third highest three point scoring rate in SEC play. So we talk about percentage of or efficiency at the rim like you hit on with Wagner and having him in this game is big for Kentucky, especially when it comes to finishing at the basket. But this may boil down to whether Kentucky can space out Tennessee's defense and exploit Tennessee from behind the arc and whether Tennessee is going to have as fine of a shooting night as they did at Rupp like they like they shot in that first meeting. Yeah, you know, it, Dillingham just went off in that first meeting too, right? And we can't really expect him to do that one more time. You know, you have Wagner back. He can sh- shoulder some of the load in this game. So I do think from, you know, like you said, they'll be able to space out uh, Tennessee a bit more in this game, and that can cause problems for Tennessee, right? So um, it's an entirely different matchup when you got Wagner back in the game. Um I am going to look for, you know, what the number is on open. And if it's somewhere around eight or seven, I'll probably hop in on it. 